On January 29, 1959, Walt Disney released his 16th animated feature film, Sleeping Beauty, which captivated audiences with the groundbreaking advancements in artistry that were poured into telling the tale of Aurora and the dark forces who came between her and her happily ever after. At the time of its release, the gorgeous retelling of Charles Perrault's tale rose to be the second largest film of its release year and stood as a testament to the hard work, passion, and capabilities that hand-drawn animation had to offer. But after this film, no other princess films arose for many, many years. In fact, this fairy tale masterpiece would be the last of its genre that Walt Disney's company would showcase to the world for 30 years. So what happened? Why would they stop making these heroine-focused films after Snow White, Cinderella, and Sleeping Beauty? What was the reason they turned away from creating more stories about princesses? Of course, now it's clear from the rise of The Little Mermaid and the domination of Frozen that the Disney princesses continue to be cultural icons, but at one point in time, it did not seem that simple, and that's what we are going to unearth. Today, we're going through the history that led up to Disney turning their backs on the princess. Hello, I'm Isaac from Monso Videos, where we discuss fun topics for fun people. I'm focused on spreading magic by examining Disney films, so if you are new here, consider following my adventures on Instagram and subscribing. To understand the end of Walt Disney's princess, first we must look at their rise, and that of course began with that of Snow White. While Walt Disney had been in the business of creating animated shorts prior to the creation of his studio that would capture the hearts of millions of people, the founding of Disney Brothers Cartoon Studio in 1923, which was renamed Walt Disney Studio in 1926 and later Walt Disney Productions, cemented his journey to create something completely new. What grew out of Walt's Alice shorts, the Oswald cartoons, and of course, the introduction of Mickey Mouse and the Silly Symphonies came new technologies, the utilization of sound within animation, and the explosion of color on screen. He grew to become a famous figure in the entertainment world, but he had an unsatisfying desire to tell more emotionally resonating stories and expand his business. This led him to announce to his key staff members that they would be creating a feature film about Snow White and her seven dwarves. Walt Disney's ambition to create the first full-length cell animated feature in motion picture history was an ambitious goal to say the least, resulting in many in the industry, along with his brother and partner Roy Disney and his wife Lillian, attempting to question whether he should pursue the project at all. Walt endeared the references to his film as Disney's folly and staked everything on the success of Snow White, and in turn he created a work that took the world by storm. By bringing on many new artists, musicians, and animators, and working tirelessly to create an animated project unlike anything Walt had created before, Snow White was praised for its fantasy, emotion, and depth. While Walt Disney was a man who initially established himself as an artist who could create cartoon characters who sprung off the screen in dynamic and interesting ways, Snow White established him as someone who could combine drama and music and passion in a way that no one had thought possible. In 1937, after Snow White and the Seven Dwarves release on December 21st, Disney received an Academy Honorary Award for his significant screen innovation and for pioneering a new field of entertainment, and Snow White became the largest film to ever have been released, grossing $8 million and earning four times more than any other film in 1938. With the commercial and critical success, Snow White allowed Walt to expand his animation company by constructing a new larger studio in Burbank, where they are still headquartered today. Then he set forth on new, massive projects. Snow White and the Seven Dwarves allowed Walt Disney to ascend to a new level of prestige, trust, and respect for the work that he could accomplish. The world trusted in the craftsmanship that he poured into projects, no matter how ambitious they became. But unfortunately, after a variety of cinematic masterpieces such as Pinocchio, Fantasia, Dumbo, and Bambi, all which together did not perform as well as desired at the box office, the world went to war, and Disney features were put on hold due to a shifting focus to create war projects propaganda for the United States. Low budget films were created at this time that utilized a combination of animation and live action, but more ambitious projects remained on the horizon if they could escape their $4 million of debt and the looming bankruptcy. 
After the war was over, Walt was ready to get back to creating experiences that captured the world's imagination, and he needed this to occur soon if he hoped to hold on to his company. Therefore, in 1948, to save Walt Disney Productions, he convinced those who were providing loans that he could revive the studio by focusing not on Alice in Wonderland or Peter Pan, which were both in production at the time, but Cinderella, and they agreed. Believing that Cinderella contains similar elements to the universally beloved Snow White, Walt was given the necessary funds to complete his second princess film. Telling the story of a poor servant girl magically transforming into a princess and achieving all of her dreams, Walt's nine reliable supervising animators referred to as his nine old men came together to animate and craft this story for audiences. While Disney himself wasn't able to oversee Cinderella, as he had other films due to the necessary diversification of the company to keep the studio afloat, for the two years the film was in development, he remained a massive influence over the direction of the story until it was finally ready for release in 1950. Releasing on February 15, 1950, Cinderella became the studio's greatest critical and commercial hit since Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, and truly revived Walt's company. Cinderella was another massive success that was triumphed as one of Walt Disney's best films and was a beautiful, radiant fairy tale with touches of humor and music that could appeal to old and young alike. What the second princess that Walt Disney brought to the silver screen did for him was similarly to what it did for him from his first. He got the opportunity to continue to set off into new ambitious projects. From the $8 million box office release, along with the other additional revenue from record sales, music publishing, publications, and merchandise, Walt Disney was able to begin creating his own distribution company, enter television production, and begin building a new type of immersive experience that will be called Disneyland. Now this brings us to the final princess film that Walt Disney created during his lifetime, and was the final fantasy heroine focused musical for three long decades from Walt Disney Animation, and that of course came in the form of Sleeping Beauty. Almost immediately after the massive success of Cinderella, story development of Sleeping Beauty began as early as mid to late 1951, but this film would take the majority of the decade to complete since Walt came into a problem when developing his third fantasy story. Disney desired to continue to harken back to his roots and show the magnificent journey of a heroine again, but he struggled to identify ways to create a new experience for audiences as there were many similarities between Snow White, Cinderella, and Sleeping Beauty. Walt wanted to discover how Sleeping Beauty could be different, and while he quickly determined with his team story elements that would be unique to this third princess film, he realized how he truly wanted to differentiate this film was through its visual storytelling. By 1952, the story mainly seemed completed and voices were recorded, but after that, for the next five years, animation production took place spanning from 1953 until 1958. That time was spent creating Walt Disney's vision of a beautiful moving tapestry that would be both bold and modern. To ensure that this vision came to life from concept to final picture, Disney gave Ivan Earl the role of production designer and gave him a significant amount of freedom in designing the settings and selecting colors for the film. While Walt was shifting his priorities upon television and the creation of Disneyland during the early to mid 1950s, his team remained focused on the vision Earl and Disney had, shifting from the typical fantasy styling and moving towards a medieval art theme mixed with art deco design. By implementing this new style and utilizing the larger 70mm film strip capable from the new Super Technorama 70 widescreen method of photographing their film, they were able to design a more sophisticated, detailed, and stylized film. Even the character designs that were typically created in tandem with animators was chosen to be designed with the backgrounds in mind to create a full continuity between the style of the film. To create these intricate designs and craft the first ever animated Super Technorama 70 production, animators were forced to use massive sheets of paper that they were unfamiliar with and slowly created the movement of every character on screen. From that point, an artist would transfer the animation from pieces of paper to transparent cells, and that character would be inked and painted until they were finally photographed. Due to the implementation of this new film technology, not only did the intricate backgrounds take at points seven times longer than typical backgrounds, but the hand-drawn and hand-painted cells became even more tedious and difficult to implement than before. The labor and love that was being poured into Sleeping Beauty was creating an animated film with more complexity and intricate artwork than ever before. 
But all of these alterations to the animation process, of course, came with a price. After completing all the animation and recording the music for the film using six channel stereophonic sound in 1957, Sleeping Beauty finally released and rose to be the second largest film of 1959. While the film did not make as much as Snow White or Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty's $5.3 million at the box office was a cinematic event. For reference, when adjusted for inflation, Walt Disney's Sleeping Beauty was a larger box office revenue generator than Avengers Infinity War. But unfortunately, that wasn't enough to make back its budget. Due to the heavy expenditures from developing Sleeping Beauty for almost a decade, the film ended up costing around $6 million, making it the most expensive Disney film up to that point, and doubling the cost of each of the previous animated features, which included Alice in Wonderland, Peter Pan, and Lady and the Tramp. Sleeping Beauty lost money in its original debut, which contributed to Walt Disney Productions taking a fiscal loss, which hadn't occurred in a decade. But that wasn't what was only holding the film back. While Sleeping Beauty is remembered today for its grandeur, lush colors, magical air, and one of the most menacing villains of all time, critics in 1959 criticized the film for being slow paced and having little character development. At the time, it was neither a commercial or critical success like its princess predecessors, and this further pushed Walt's interest away from animation and into his other projects. Yes, he hoped to create more wonderful stories for the world, but he had his sights set on something larger. Specifically in 1959, soon after the current disappointment of Sleeping Beauty, Walt Disney began searching for land to house a second resort. He began to see a dream of having full control over wide scapes of land, which would allow him to construct new ideas of an experimental prototype City of Tomorrow and his new Magic Kingdom. What this all meant was that the Walt Disney Company gave up on adapting fairy tale films of princesses and true love after 1959. Walt Disney himself struggled to even differentiate Sleeping Beauty from his other princess stories. So when that effort did not pay off as he had hoped, like Snow White and Cinderella had, he felt he had little left to explore in the genre for that time. Walt Disney set forth on Sleeping Beauty to create an animation that had opulence and meticulous, unprecedented craftsmanship, and he accomplished that. They had worked so hard for that film to stand out and become a masterpiece, and while it would eventually be remembered as such, Walt felt that he had other stories to tell, and other worlds to construct. Which is why he never again led a project that would use hand-inked cells, and would never again lead the charge on the creation of a classic princess. Even after his tragic passing, his company continued down the pre-described path he created after Sleeping Beauty. But eventually, that was undone. Walt Disney's decision to escape the princess film wouldn't remain permanent, as 30 years later, a group of artists decided they wanted to tell the story of A Little Mermaid. But of course, that's a story for another day. If you enjoyed my second exploration of Disney history, let me know by liking and sharing this video, along with commenting what ideas I should explore in the future. The last history video I did focused on the history of Lilo and Stitch, and I think it's a fantastic video I'd love for you all to view, which is why I've linked it below. If you'd like to continue to see other magical history discussions like this one, then don't forget to click that subscribe button and the beautiful bell if you're new. And also a big thank you goes out to my wonderful patrons over on Patreon who are amazing supporters of my videos. Thanks for watching, and of course, have a magical day.